Bill. Susan, what are you doing here? At the entrance of a luxury hotel I visited on a business trip, I unexpectedly ran into my husband, Bill, who, for some reason, was clinging to a woman who was not me. The woman gave me a triumphant look, and it was clear she wasn't a business associate. In that moment, I understood everything. With this realization, I knew I was no longer needed in Bill's life. I let out a laugh and said, I'm sorry to interrupt you, as I walked towards the station. No, it's not like that. The woman's triumphant laughter and Bill's panicked voice followed me. But I didn't look back and just got on the train. As I watched the nightscape pass by the window, I thought about catching Bill in the act. But surprisingly, I didn't feel despair. I was going to live a different life from Bill. All I needed to do was take care of Emily. Before stepping back completely, I would do everything I needed to do properly. My name is Susan, and I'm 42 years old. I met my husband, Bill, during our college days when we happened to be in the same research lab. We quickly grew closer by attending the same seminars and sharing similar hobbies. Thanks to our professor's connections, we chose jobs in the same area, so we often had meals together and discussed work problems, and this naturally deepened our relationship, and we eventually got married. It's wonderful that my students are getting married. Please let me be your matchmaker. Our professor offered to be our matchmaker, and our wedding, though small, was heartwarming and intimate. Fortunately, Bill's parents welcomed us warmly from the start. Susan is like our own child. She's a wonderful woman for marrying Bill. When Bill's mother, Mary, said this to my mom and me right after our marriage, I truly felt that our marriage would be a happy one. In our harmonious married life, we had a daughter named Emily. She is now a lively 10-year-old girl. I lost my dad early on, and by the time Emily was born, my mom, who had always been frail, had also passed away. So, it was a great relief when my mom, still alive at the time, got to see newborn Emily. While juggling childcare and building my career through remote work, I struggled to balance both. There were times when I was put in charge of projects, making it a whirlwind of childcare and work. Sometimes, Emily would burst into my online meetings, or I'd soothe her late night crying while racing against deadlines. However, Bill's parents, Mary and Kevin, tirelessly supported us and helped take care of Emily, allowing me to manage both household chores and childcare. Having a reliable place to leave Emily was truly a blessing. I felt so grateful that I often sent gifts or travel vouchers to Mary and Kevin, but Mary would kindly say, Raising kids is expensive, so don't worry about us. She always showed us such warmth after accepting the gifts. Bill was also extremely busy with his work often returning home after we were asleep and leaving before we woke up. Even so, when he could take a day off, instead of resting all day, he would spend time with Emily. He played with her tirelessly and sometimes helped me prepare dinner. Working together as a couple, we raised Emily for 10 years. However, during those 10 years, Bill seemed to change. His mouth twisted, and he developed a sarcastic tone, with a look of bitterness in his eyes. Bill's noticeable change in attitude began when my salary surpassed his. It seemed he couldn't stand it. He always had a strong sense of pride as a man, but his sudden change from being cooperative and kind left me bewildered. Bill's lifestyle and attitude also began to deteriorate. Hey Bill, please stop leaving your socks inside out. 
And don't throw things into the trash can like that. It scares Emily. Just because you make more money than me, don't act all high and mighty. This has nothing to do with salaries, right? Oh no. Women have it so easy, don't they? Talking to him like this never led to a productive conversation. Even if we did talk, it always turned into an argument. That's no way to talk. All right. All right. I was just joking. Bill would wave his hand dismissively, but I knew it wasn't just a joke. His real frustration was seeping through. Especially during meals, the atmosphere would get tense even with Emily present. One evening, I was late preparing dinner, and it ended up being leftovers. Sorry for being late. We'll have to settle for yesterday's leftovers. Hey, you made us wait, and now you're serving leftovers? A wife who can't even cook for her husband is useless. I feel sorry for Emily. I know being late was my fault, but you don't have to say it like that. It's one thing to take out his frustrations on me, but it's harmful in front of Emily. Still, Emily looked at us and said, Mom's food is delicious. Come on, Dad, let's eat together. She encourages him. Her words made me feel ashamed for making such a young child worry. But Bill seemed annoyed even by Emily's attempt to mediate. Unless someone was taking his side, he wasn't satisfied. That night, he kept grumbling as he ate the leftovers. One day, when I served mac and cheese, Bill made a strange comment. All right, 35 points. Needs more practice. If it were Jessica's mac and cheese. Oops. He trailed off, realizing he had said too much. In that brief moment of silence, I understood that Bill was comparing me to another woman. The fact that Bill had someone else making mac and cheese for him. I was deeply shaken, but maybe I misheard. The word affair crossed my mind, but surely he wouldn't betray Emily like that. I convinced myself to pretend I hadn't heard anything. By the way, when Mary and Kevin are around, he doesn't express his dissatisfaction. He knows it won't go well for him if he complains in front of them. Once, when he raided my cooking while they were present. This pasta is too bland. It's only worth 50 points. The moment, Mary's face turned stormy. If you're going to be that rude, you can cook. She rushed to make it because you said you wanted it. No. I didn't mean it like that. If you didn't mean it, that's even worse. Mary grabbed Bill by the scruff of his neck and dragged him to the kitchen, making him cook from scratch and critiquing his efforts harshly. Do you realize now how much effort goes into the meals you eat? I didn't raise a man who would criticize someone else's cooking. Susan, I'm so sorry. After Mary's thorough reprimand, Bill stopped saying anything in front of her. However, his behavior remained unchanged with me, showing he hadn't truly reflected on his actions. Hey, don't go telling my parents everything, all right? Women always tattle. He would say this every time we clashed. I started to think maybe I shouldn't be telling Mary and Kevin everything. They would scold him, but would it just make Bill more resentful? I was deeply troubled. When Bill was home, the atmosphere was always tense. I tried making his favorite meals and buying books by his favorite authors from college. But his reactions were always negative. Are you mocking me? You think you're so high and mighty choosing books you think I like? It was impossible to have a conversation with him. Bill's aggression even started to target Emily. When I had a conversation with him, I had to choose words that would fill Bill's mind. What do you think? Speak up. If the response wasn't what he expected, 
He would pretend not to hear. He would get obviously upset or change the subject to something completely unrelated, making my opinions feel dismissed. If he already had a conclusion, he should just say it instead of making others say it for him. If he made decisions himself, he'd have to take responsibility. He makes others say what he wants so he can complain later. When Emily wanted to go to the amusement park, he wouldn't outright say, it's too expensive, but his reluctance was clear. Emily, trying to be considerate, would suggest, how about going to the zoo instead? But even at the zoo, Bill wouldn't seem to enjoy himself and would just look at his phone at the restaurant. On the way back from the zoo, we saw a poster for an amusement park. I wish we could go to the amusement park with Dad someday. Emily murmured. Bill suddenly became irritable. I took you to the zoo because you said you wanted to go. How dare you complain now? I wasted my precious time. He snapped. Emily didn't say she wanted to go today. You don't have to yell at her like that. And you've been on your phone a lot lately. I'm doing my duty as a dad and all you do is complain. I still have work to do, and I need my phone for that. I was fed up with Bill's constant outbursts. If he couldn't handle the workload, he should consider reducing his hours or even quitting. I earned enough to support us for a while, and we could look for a new job together. But I knew that bringing this up would only make things worse because his bad mood was partly due to the salary difference. I couldn't subject Emily to his frustration any longer, and I even thought about a temporary separation. I hoped that once Bill's projects was finished and he got his promotion, he would return to being the kind husband he used to be. The one thing that seemed to relieve Bill's stress was playing games with Emily. And during that time, he always smiled. When Emily came home from school, they were engrossed in the new game we recently bought. During these times, the house felt cheerful, and Emily was always smiling, which made me feel relieved. Bill himself started to enjoy gaming, and even after Emily went to bed, he would often play alone. In front of the game screen, he showed a rare, childlike smile. If only this calmness could last, I would feel relieved. But reality was different. One day, I had to go on a sudden business trip to New York. Coincidentally, Bill also had a business trip and would be away. So, I decided to leave Emily with Mary and Kevin. Emily usually looked forward to playing games at Bill's parents' house. But that day, she wasn't her usual self and didn't even mention taking her game console. Emily, do you want to take your game console? She shook her head slightly when I asked. Not today, I guess. Emily usually looked forward to playing games with Mary and Kevin, so her unusual behavior worried me, but I had to leave for New York. Please take care of Emily, I said as I dropped her off at Mary and Kevin's place. Mary welcomed her warmly. Don't worry, we'll have a great time together. You go on and have a safe trip. Despite her reassurance, I couldn't stop thinking about Emily. During a break at work, I called to check on her. Mary and Kevin had taken her to the amusement park. Emily is doing great. She's saying, it's so much fun at the amusement park. We even rode the merry-go-round like we were kids again. That's wonderful. Emily has been wanting to go for a while, but we never got the chance. Really, we're making sure she has a blast today. Mary and Kevin were truly wonderful people. Feeling relieved, I attended my meeting in New York. After the meeting ended, I was preparing to head home when a colleague approached me. If you're tired, you should check out the luxury hotel nearby. It has a pool and is really relaxing. 
I hesitated, thinking I needed to pick up Emily soon, but I was quite exhausted and decided to treat myself to a stay at the hotel. However, as I approached the entrance of the luxury hotel, I couldn't believe my eyes when I ran into Bill. Bill. Susan, what are you doing here? Standing next to Bill was a woman I didn't recognize, and he looked shocked, his mouth gaping. Who is this old lady? The woman looked at me, tilting her head in confusion. Bill was flustered. Oh, this is well. He stammered, unable to form a coherent sentence. Bill, explain this, I said, trying to understand the situation. The woman next to Bill seemed far too intimate to be just a business associate. My mind didn't want to accept it, but the situation clearly indicated Bill's betrayal. Oh, this must be your wife. Why don't you introduce me properly? What are you saying, Jessica? Hearing the name Jessica, everything clicked. It was the name mentioned during the mac and cheese argument. So this is what it was about. I felt a deep chill run through my body. Hey, old lady, I'm dating Bill. I'm pretty hot, so I became his mistress, but now I want to be his wife. It's pathetic for you to cling to him, so just divorce him already. It seemed Bill had been lying to Jessica about many things. I let out a laugh and said, I'm sorry to interrupt you as I walked towards the station. No, it's not like that. Jessica's triumphant laughter and Bill's panicked voice followed me, but I didn't look back and just got on the train. As I watched the nightscape pass by the window, I thought about catching Bill in the act, but surprisingly, I didn't feel despair. I was going to live a different life from Bill. All I needed to do was take care of Emily. When I went to pick her up from Bill's parents, I found her fast asleep on Kevin's back. She seems to have played so much that she fell asleep. Thank you so much for taking her to the amusement park. I really appreciate it. No need to thank us. You could have stayed longer in New York. Do you want to stay the night? Seeing Mary and Kevin's smiles made my heart ache. Divorcing Bill meant separating from these wonderful people. I had no family left and didn't want to take Emily away from her grandparents. But I couldn't stay with Bill anymore. I told Emily about the divorce. However, after hearing a shocking story from Emily, I made a firm decision. I arranged a formal divorce discussion with Bill, including his mistress, Jessica. Jessica, who was Bill's junior co-worker, had seduced him when our relationship was strained. She repeatedly bad-mouthed me and praised Bill, so it must have felt comforting for him. It didn't take long for them to become romantically involved. When their affair was exposed, Bill, possibly emboldened by Jessica, took a condescending attitude. So, it's a divorce then. I'll pay the alimony. And child support too. Yeah, I got it. Stop nagging. I'll pay it. Bill looked relieved, as if a weight had been lifted off his chest. I suddenly thought of something and glanced between Bill and Jessica. I had noticed something unusual about Jessica's stomach. Is there a baby involved? Yes, there is. Honestly, I was wondering when to tell you, so this makes it easier. Bill said, almost as if it were convenient for him. Jessica, standing next to him, was happily caressing her stomach. I couldn't bear to look at this scene and turned my eyes away. I couldn't tell Emily about this horrible situation. Having a child, too. Have you ever thought about how Emily would feel? I don't need a brat like her. What did you just say? Bill's relentless insults knew no bounds. It's natural for a man to earn more than a woman. 
Women should just stay home and do the chores. If Emily turns out like you, she'll never amount to anything. He sneered. My body shook with anger. Do you think you can get away with saying such terrible things? I prefer a young woman who respects me. I'll love the child with my new girlfriend much more than the one I had with you. Without you holding me back, I can finally get my life back. Bill's eyes sparkled as if he were dreaming of his new life. By the way, is the new baby's name Ashley? How do you know that? That's creepy. Hey, don't say our angel's name with your filthy mouth. Jessica laughed arrogantly next to Bill and sneered. Hurry up and get the divorce done, old lady. We'll pay alimony. Just get it over with. Do you really think Mary and Kevin will approve of your remarriage in this situation? No matter what, I'm still their son. They only act strict because they care about me. Once they see my cute child, they'll melt. Bill seemed completely confident he would have his parents' support. There was no trace of dignity or compassion between Bill and Jessica. Their selfish and cruel nature was fully exposed, which oddly made me feel calmer. The money in my account had increased, but since it was evidence of Bill's betrayal, it felt like dirty money. However, it was essential for raising Emily. I had loved Bill, but I never expected to be insulted this much. I considered letting Emily see her father one last time but realized it would only hurt her more. I'll inform Mary and Kevin myself. You're not planning to say anything unnecessary, are you? This happened because of my shortcomings, right? I'll go apologize and step back completely. Bill's lips curled into a deeply malicious smile. Oh wow, you're going to tell them you got dumped because you're not attractive anymore? I could never do that, too embarrassing. Well, I'm not going to stop you. What a pathetic woman. Was he always this vulgar? As I looked down at the two beasts in human skin, my heart grew colder. You were shamelessly relying on Bill's income. Now you and your daughter will live a miserable, poor life. How sad. Yeah, exactly. It seemed to Jessica thought I was a lazy housewife living off Bill's income who was about to be kicked out. Bill's pride wouldn't allow him to admit that he earned less than I did. When she mentioned this, Bill's eyes lost focus for a moment. I'm not pitiful. You two are the pathetic ones. You look so pathetic making excuses, old lady. I said nothing more, left the meeting, and filed for divorce. This marked the end of my marriage. The kind Bill I once knew was gone. Now, it was my turn. I visited Mary and Kevin's house, calmly informed them of our divorce, and apologized, saying, I'm sorry, it's my fault for not being enough. They looked shocked and exchanged glances. What happened? Did Bill do something again? No. It's my fault for not being able to satisfy him. I continued to explain. When I told Emily about the divorce, she shared something with me too. It was the reason she had stopped playing games on her console. When she looked at the saved game data, she accidentally opened Bill's file. In Bill's game data, the main character was named after him. The female main character was named after his mistress, and the other was named Ashley. Emily understood what this meant because one of her classmates' parents had divorced due to the father's affair. Does Dad not want me anymore? Shocked, she didn't take her game console with her. Seeing the names of his mistress and their child lovingly used in the game must have broken Emily's heart. I didn't tell you because I knew it would make you sad. Hearing such words from my child made me feel helpless. Emily had suffered so much, and I knew nothing. 
Meanwhile, Bill was completely engrossed in his affair, ignoring Emily's feelings. He must have been in a good mood while playing that game because it reminded him of Jessica. This is unbelievable. I can't believe Bill was such a heartless person. You tried to protect us, didn't you? I'm so sorry. Emily was looking forward to playing games with her grandparents. This is just but thinking about her. I said in a barely audible voice. Mary grabbed my shoulder. Don't worry, we will never accept Bill back. That's right. It would be much worse to be separated from Emily and you, Susan. For a moment, I had feared they would side with their son and cast us out. But Mary and Kevin were supportive and kind. With their support, I decided to move from our current home to a new place. In the meantime, Bill took Jessica to visit his parents, but they were chased away. Bill assumed his parents would favor their biological son. I guess Susan told you, but we got divorced and I found myself a young wife. Aren't you happy for us mom and dad? Nice to meet you. Unlike the old lady, I'm cute. So let's get along. You'll have an even cuter grandchild soon. Their arrogant attitude only earned them angry shouts from Mary and Kevin. How dare you? You've done the worst thing a father and husband could do. And you have the nerve to come back here. And you, Jessica? I want nothing to do with someone who knowingly dates a married man. Our only grandchild is Emily. Completely rejected and taken by surprise, Bill immediately called me. Hey, I told you not to say anything unnecessary. Did you provoke them? Why would my own parents kick me out? I just told the truth and apologized, saying, I'm sorry for being an inadequate wife. How did you think such strict parents would accept you? That's not the point. Without their help, I can't raise a child. How self-centered could he be? But I had no time to deal with Bill. I was on my way to see my old college professor. I'm sorry, I got divorced because I wasn't enough. I'm sorry for this outcome after you were our matchmaker. I formally apologized to my professor and explained the situation. You might meet his new wife soon. They'll probably come to introduce themselves. The professor was furious. Not only did Bill disgrace him, but the professor likely related to me as he had married off his own daughter. If my daughter and grandchild were treated like that, I would never forgive it. You must not let this break you. I also told my colleagues from our lab days about our divorce. Soon, Bill was labeled as the heartless man who kicked out his family to be with his mistress and have a child. Bill's phone was flooded with messages, and he was blocked or cut off by many. Bill had been getting specialized work through the professor's connections, but after my conversation with the professor, those jobs stopped coming his way. He had originally received those jobs solely through the professor's generosity. And since they were his largest contracts, his income dropped significantly. He could barely support himself, let alone raise a child. Meanwhile, the professor recommended me for those jobs. You had better grades after all. How about giving it a try? Since Bill and I shared the same field of expertise, I could handle the work. I still had my usual remote work, so it was quite challenging. But it was rewarding to use my knowledge in this new job. Naturally, Bill was furious. Why should I lose my job over an affair? You set this up, didn't you? You were jealous of my work and planned to take it by making me have an affair. I was trapped. Unable to accept reality, he started making irrational accusations. At work, Bill had been arrogant, so they were grateful to have me take his place. To be honest, 
Bill always tried to shift the blame onto others so we couldn't speak freely. Everyone is pleased with the change. Bill never took responsibility for his words or actions, always making others say or do things his way and blaming them for the outcomes. His extreme tendency to blame others was remarkable. Even when things went his way, if the results weren't as he expected, he would say, you suggested it, so it's your fault. This created a stifling work environment, and some people were driven to quit because of it. Bill, working freelance, lost his jobs from the professor and angrily stormed into the workplace. Moreover, he still thought he was the leader and tried to boss people around. Oh, you're not involved here anymore. Please leave. What are you talking about? This place can't run without me. Don't change the manual on your own. You were pushing everyone too hard and creating a hectic schedule. I streamlined the process by cutting out unnecessary steps. Bill's face turned bright red as he listened to my response. It must have infuriated him to be spoken to so firmly by someone he looked down on. What are you talking about? I wasn't pushing anyone too hard. I was in a respected position. He was determined not to admit any fault. Watching Bill, with his red face and heaving shoulders, was almost painful. Then one of Bill's subordinates stepped forward and played a recording. Do you really think your idea would work in the real world with that brain of yours? I knew that idea was terrible. The failure is all your fault for suggesting it. The room filled with Bill's harsh words and blame-shifting statements. It was a hundred times worse than what I had heard. I thought I might be the next one to be driven to the edge, so I recorded it just in case. That's not true. You said those things, not me. Bill raised his voice in desperation, but the glares from those around him were piercing. This is pointless. There's no reasoning with him. What kind of attitude is that? I'm your boss. Former boss, right? Please leave. If you persist, I'll call security. I promptly picked up the phone connected to security and Bill stomped out of the building. By the way, after losing his income, Bill and Jessica had a falling out. Jessica, realizing things weren't going as planned, returned to her parents' house to give birth. Bill had no one to rely on, and Jessica was looked down upon, so she couldn't stay with him. However, even if she returned with her baby, Bill was still poor after paying alimony to me. Jessica persistently demanded child support from Bill, but he kept avoiding her. How do I know all this? Because Jessica told me the whole story and demanded money. Bill doesn't have any money, so can you pay instead? My angel is much more important than your daughter. I care about my own daughter. You're young. Why don't you work? People are so unkind to single mothers. How could you say that? I didn't know you were the one earning more. I thought you were living off Bill's income. He deceived me, so I'm the victim. She screamed. What on earth was she talking about? There was no way I would give her money. You're the one who assumed I wasn't earning. Anyway, don't contact me again. Ignoring Jessica's continued ranting on the phone, I hung up. I couldn't waste any more time on them. I focused on spending time with Emily and handling my new job with Mary and Kevin's support. A few years later, Emily graduated from elementary school. Seeing her at the graduation ceremony, I almost cried. However, there was an unwelcome guest at the entrance of the school. It was Bill. He looked very unkempt, with clothes covered in lint and a strange smell. He had an unshaven face and looked extremely unhealthy. Bill walked up to Emily and said, Emily, it's been a while. Dad. 
Don't you miss me? Don't you want me to come back? Please ask your mom. I hurried over and pulled Emily away from Bill. What are you doing here? You have no right to be here. Please, I'm at my limit. From what I gathered, Bill had been struggling to find stable work and had debts with shady lenders. He was being chased by debt collectors and couldn't get a job without a permanent address. He said any money he had went to food or hotel bills, so he couldn't save up to improve his appearance. That's your own fault. I'm not talking to you. Emily, if you just say yes, I can come back. Bill hadn't changed at all. He was still trying to make Emily say, I wanted you back. Dad. What? Bill looked at Emily with hopeful eyes. I hate you. I never want to see you again. Emily's shout echoed. Bill was stunned, not expecting to be rejected. After the divorce, Emily's stress had visibly decreased without Bill around. Who would want to return to that pressurized life? That's right. You never did anything fatherly, so don't think you can just come back. Wait. I really have no money and I'm so lonely. Bill watched us walk away with slumped shoulders. I felt a bit sorry for him, but he was the one who abandoned us first. When I first discovered his affair, I planned to get the alimony and be done with him. But after hearing Emily's story about the game, I couldn't forgive him for the pain he caused her. This was for the best. Seeing Emily happily playing new game with Mary and Kevin, I vowed to protect this family.